Okay, so I'm recording mm. so I don't forget. So um, if anybody gets a notification that says we're recording, just agree or hit yes or whatever, please. Um, and so then let's go to speaker view and then we're going to start with, okay, where did Nan see? I'm up here. Oh, there you are. Mm -hmm. So let's, hold on, I'm double clicking to find you all. When there's so many people on here. Um, yeah, 41, 42 okay, we go. together. Wow. That's a lot. And mm -hmm. so um, our new upcoming president next year, if nobody knows, is Nancy Miller. Welcome, oh, Nancy. Yay. Wow. Hello. So we're going to, um, since Maggie just had surgery on her knee today, she asked me to fill in, which um it's trial by fire because i i've never led the zoom meeting thing before but um it's so cool to see so many people um logged on to zoom um there's 40 plus right now um 42 43 if you count you know because we double up a little bit yeah, well, um, Gail, just like gail in yep so, um, okay, first, the, the first thing I was told was don't forget to let Maxine tell her joke. So <laughs> here we go. Okay, so the thing is that most seniors never get enough exercise. In God's wisdom, he decreed that seniors become forgetful so they would have to search for their glasses, keys, and other things thus doing more walking. And God looked down and saw that was good. Then God saw there was another need. In his wisdom, he made seniors lose coordination so they would drop things, requiring them to bend, reach, and stretch. And God looked down and saw that it was good. And then God considered the function of bladders, decided that seniors <laughs> would have additional calls of nature requiring more trips to the bathroom, thus providing more exercise. God looked down and saw that it was good. So if you find as you, as you are aging, you're getting up and down more, remember, it's God's will. It's all in your best interest, even though you mutter under your breath. <laughs> so I also have <clears throat> nine important facts to remember as we grow older. Starting with nine, you know, it's always the easiest. Death is the number one killer in the world. Eight. Life is sexually transmitted, seven. Good health is merely the slowest possible way which you can die. Six, <laughs> men have two motivations, hunger and hanky panky. And if you and you can't, and they can't tell them apart. So if you see a gleam in their eyes, make them a sandwich. Give a person a fish, and you can feed them for a day. Teach a person to use the internet and they won't bother you for weeks, months, maybe even years. Health nuts are going to feel stupid someday lying in the hospital, dying of nothing. All of us could take a lesson from the weather. It pays no attention to criticism. In the 60s, people took LSD to make the world weird. Now the world is weird and people take Prozac to make it normal. <laughs> so my last one is that life is like a jar of jalapeno peppers. What you do today may be a burning issue tomorrow. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Uh -huh. I think I resemble way too many of those. <laughs> <laughs> so Rochelle is this where I hand it over to you and you introduce our our uh, lovely Miss Lisa um pretty close I have one or two other announcements okay. in between 
Um, we would like you all to um, go to our website, umbs.org, and check out all the things we have going for November. We have chocked full of events, three different Saturday events besides tonight to keep you busy, occupied, and give you lots of things to make. And so the first one we have is November 13th. Um, and that is Susan Clum is teaching her beaded batik hanging ornament class. And it is free to everyone. You just have to go to Sue's website and buy her kit. And she'll give members discounts on the kits. And you can see the pictures of what it looks like on the umbs.org. And then also on November 20th. Is that right now? is our Let's Bead Live Saturday. Time is left on that. <laughs> and so um, we have changed um, the name from Beading Basics Live because we've covered most of the basics and now basically we're just beading. So people agreed that let's just update the name as we're updating ourselves. So Let's Bead Live is the new current name um, and we're going to be beating um, with three different people um, from basically, um, we have, um, what's her name? Sorry, Leslie Venturoso is our first person at one o'clock and she'll be teaching a, a really cool rope pattern. It is a cubic right angle weave. Okay, my coworker left. Anyway, um, um, a cubic right angle weave rope with texture. So it's like six O demis, six O rounds, and then other extra bobbles. So it's a really cool way. If you're afraid of right angle weave, don't be because they're really big beads. So cubic right angle weave shouldn't be scary. So that's mm -hmm. at two o'clock. Then at three o'clock will be Maggie Thompson teaching a pattern by Hannah Rosner from her trendsetter days. So it's a ginkgo octagonal um, thing that is um, hexagonal, not like octagonal, sorry. And you can make components for earrings or bracelets or a necklace, however you wanna do it. And um, it is really cool. And so Kim Leahy is in the middle and she's teaching, um, Benito Patalo. It is a pattern, a trendsetter pattern as well. And that is by um, using uh, teacups and gem duos. And so then you create these really cool little leaf um, type components as well that you can make earrings or necklace or a pattern. So the patterns to download are on the umbs.org website and that supply lists and all are everything there. And so that's our Let's Be Live Saturday and the 20th of November from one to four. Central time, that is always. So then next we have Thanksgiving Saturday and so this is what we'll be teaching on Thanksgiving Saturday. It is called Unicorn Tears. Oh, sorry, my camera's backwards. So it says it's backwards. But it is Alexandra Sidorenko's pattern. Um, and Bobby Bead has the current exclusive on the pattern. And so the class is free. You just have to buy the kit and the kits are $9.95. But if a unicorn were to cry, what would their tears look like? And they would be these beautiful little sparkles. So it uses a squished rondel faceted, like squished, and they're five by seven, six by nine, they're assorted sizes. And you can do the pattern in a variety of different ways, depending on how you want to embellish or do the right to the back. So these are the colorways of the kits. We have an Alexandrite, and then there's a Siam Ruby, there's a Fuchsia with gold, there's a Jet Black and Bronze, there's a Blush Pink with gold, an Aquamarine. So that, that, those are the colors of the kits. And so if you just want to make them in earrings, that's cool. You want to make a double stack. There'll be enough supplies in there to make four earrings or two double stackers, depending on your thing. 
Or if you want to do what I did and make them into drops hanging off, you know, they're really just fun, limitless, or hang them into ornaments. So that's November 27th. It's called Unicorn Tears. And that'll be taught three times on that day. So there'll be a 1245 class, a two o'clock class, and a 315 class. So when you buy your kit, then you just let me know which class you want to sign up for, and we'll send you the Zoom links for that. Um, so, Rochelle, mm -hmm. when will the kits be available? The kits, um, I just finished making them on Sunday. So they are now available at Bobby Bead. And we're trying to figure out if we can put them on the website or not, because it's just for this class at the moment, um, for all the members of the Bead Society. Um, or if you're not a member, it's okay. You can join, you can do it. You just have to buy the kit. So that's the idea. Um, and so it's just our first thing that we've ever done. That's we're trying to figure out how you put it on the website, but contact me. We'll sell you the kit, ship you the kit. You can pick up the kit and then we'll send you the zoom links for whichever class works best for your time zone. And so I'll get Maggie that information as well. We'll get that on umbs.org as well. I just had to finish making all the samples all weekend. So, um, so now we have our speaker host of the day. We have um, Lisa is going to be teaching us her incredible new little um, earring pattern, component pattern, whatever you want to make out of it pattern. <laughs> but it's so unique. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much for your creative design. Thank you, Rochelle. Yeah, so um, I was busy doing that. But before I show you the different things you can make with the um, component or the earring, um, I wanted to, um, this, this is my first um, class that was sponsored. So I'm really excited about that. So I wanted to thank all the sponsors. Um, the UMBS provided the crystals for this kit. Um, Starman provided um, the crescents and what else, Rochelle? They, um, the the UMBS supplied the crystals, the crystals and Starman. Then Starman gave all the crescents and the fire polish. And, okay. then, and then Bobby B gave all the seed beads and the thread, the one G um, and the one G and, um, and then my time to ship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Maggie had volunteered to uh, make the kits for us. Okay. So I wanted to, uh, Big thank you to everybody. And Rochelle is really the rock star in all this. Um, once I showed her the design, she um, got on the horn and contacted everybody and, um, you know, asked everybody if they'd be willing to sponsor the materials for this kit. And so if it wasn't for Rochelle, we would have had to pay for the um, individual components. So thank you, Rochelle. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate all the sponsors. You know, after years of this, talking to all those people, it pays off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. So um, let me uh, switch the camera here. Oops, no, not turn it off. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Um, whoops. Can you... See that? Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. Let me turn on the cameras. Okay. So the um the things that I had made using this component. One is um, the earrings, and I decided to put a tassel on the bottom of the earring, or you can put a drop, or you know anything that you want. So that's an idea. And then I also made this bracelet which is um, great because it is reversible. It takes a lot of crystals, but it does make a, a nice bracelet. And um, also a ring. You know, I mean, there's not too many rings that are reversible. So that would be a, a fun thing to make too with these. So anyways, 
Um, a little bit about myself before we jump into making them. Um, I started off with um, uh, entering into contests. I entered into two contests um, and I placed in both of them. And the second year uh, I made this necklace, whoops, um, with the Ava's Planet beaded beads that I used on this. And then this one has a tassel. And I placed fifth, fifth place with this necklace. And Maggie had loved the beads so much that she had decided to create um, a design with those in it. And that was the um, Ava's Planet necklace. And that is in her um, ebook on interweave. So she did, she used these beads and then she made a lariat. So it's three ropes. And um, then we got into being partners together and she has been uh, my mentor and my business partner ever since. And uh, it's been a wonderful journey with her. So I can't thank her enough for mentoring me um, through all of this. So anyways, okay. So if we wanna get started, a uh, little bit about the thread. Let me, oh, sorry, there we go. Okay. So about the thread, um, I know in the pattern, I don't mention uh, doubling it. Um, you could use it as a single, single thread and that's fine. Um, you might find your beadwork to be a little bit loose so you might want to just retrace the thread path. Otherwise you could double it. And if you do choose to double it, I like to wax the thread um, so it doesn't look like an alpaca on a humid day. Um, so I just do that until it becomes one thread. So you can also use Fireline if you choose to. Um, I really like the Toho 1G thread because it comes in a variety of colors and it um, goes really well, it complements the beads um, really well. And so if you do see any thread, you know, it will, like I said, complement the beads and just kind of blend in with everything. If you use Fireline, you'll see it and, you know, it's whatever you prefer. So for this, um, I chose some colors that are not in the kit just because they're um, easier to see on camera. So if we have the pattern, and you have your thread ready to go. Um, let's see, just in case you don't have your thread ready to go, I'll just uh, discuss the beads that are in the kit. So you should have crescents and you need to make sure that both of the holes are open on the crescent beads. Then you have your size 15 seed beads. You have fire polish and you have your crystals. And your, and your thread, okay? So everybody ready to go? <laughs> All right. Hey, Lisa, I'm, I'm seeing your, the tray of earrings, not your hands. I don't know about anybody else, but. Is, is nobody seeing that tray of beads? I don't, everybody's on mute. <laughs> I know I, I can so. see you. Um, I, I can see it. The tray of beads is yep. the upper Midwest, isn't it? Or yeah, yep. okay. Yeah. Look for Lisa. Because you can see her beads. Yeah. Okay, I that's good. That. Okay. So you might want to refresh, Becky. Okay. So to get started. Um, Another option is if you want to use a stop bead um, on this, 
uh, it would just be for a short time. Uh, so I choose not to, but it's up to you. So what I'm going to do is um, step one, I say on one yard length of thread, if you are using a single thread, you can use one yard length of thread. If you are doubling it, I would cut a two yard length of thread, which would then give you one yard once you double it. So, okay, oops, there we go. So I picked up a crescent and then a 15, a fire polish and a 15. And then just slide that down to the, the crescent. Okay. And then all the crescent beads are going to be this way. I strung it with the, the hole on top. And they're going to be facing with the um, curve of the crescent bead facing upwards. And that curve is going to fit into the grooves in your crystal. So we want to make sure that they are all facing, all the curves are facing the same way in the crescents. So you're going to repeat that sequence until you have a total of six crescents. And then you, um, okay, we'll get to that point first. So again, I'm just picking up a crescent, a 15 fire polish and a 15. Am I zoomed in enough? Is, is that okay? Or do you want to zoom in a little bit more? Is that better? Looks great. That looks good. Okay. And then again, crescent. And then fire polish. And crescent. And then a couple, a couple more crescents and then done. There. So I have five, so this is my last crescent. So there I have six crescents. Let's see. I know if everybody's looking down, then they're not ready to move on. So I just have to look at everybody. <laughs> so there is um, six crescents and then for the last thing that I'm going to do is pick up a 15 uh, fire polish and a 15. Hey Lisa, where's, which side is your um, end of your thread? Is it to the left? Oh, sorry. Yep. So my end of the thread is here. Let's see. Oops. Oh shoot. I had it the, that way, but I thought you said to turn them up. So I turned it around the other way. So does it make any difference? No, I. Which way you have your end thread? I can just turn mine around. It it doesn't. Um, the pictures. Um, if you want to follow the pictures, 
Um, well, I don't know what I can do. I can just, <laughs> I can just um, thread my needle at the um, other end. Oh, there you I go. <laughs> Good thinking. It really, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> the important, well, it does, if you're following the pictures, it does, it is important for that. Um, yeah. But you, the important thing is you want to make sure the crescents um, are all facing the, the same direction. So. Sorry, I will put a note. Um, I guess that's a good note to put on my pattern, which way the tail is. So, okay. And then Lisa, once you have- Can I ask a question, Lisa? This is Julie, how are you? Yes. If you, on the last one- Hi, Julie. You, hi. So you did the- is it just at the last one you have a um, 15 fire polish 15? It's just one fire, one, one set of those? No, it's, oh. um, so you pick up a crescent and then after you pick up the first crescent, then you have a 15, a fire polish and a 15. You pick up the crescent. And yep. so in between the crescents, you should have a 15, a fire polish and a 15. Okay, and after you do the sixth one, is it after just you add the sixth crescent, you need to add one more 15 fire polish and 15 because when we close the circle, that's okay. going to give you that right thank there. You. So it's not going to be two crescents that are together. Perfect, thank you. So Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so then I am going to tie a couple of knots here. So if you did add a stop bead, you can remove it and then tie the knots. And it's important to get the knots tight because again, this is the base for the bezel. So, and I wait until the end to cut my thread. Just so there, that's the first part of our bezel. And as you can see, if I put the crystal in there, these, crescents are going to come up and hug the crystal. So that's what it should look like. Okay. So is everybody there? Yes. Okay. So to, um, so I'm going to, um, just to get past my knot here, I'm gonna sew through the same holes that I used. Uh, I'm gonna sew through the, the crescent, the 15, the fire polish and the 15, and the second crescent. There, like that. Okay. Then pull your thread tight. You want to have a good uh, tight tension with this project also. So your thread is now exiting the bottom hole of the crescent. Oops. There. And what you're going to do to step up is just sew through this top wall. And pull the thread. So now you should be reversing thread direction.
like that. Okay. And that is figure um, on two of the pattern. Oops. There we go. So this part, so we're gonna, um, so I laid the beadwork flat on my work surface. And I'm going to put the crystal on the beadwork and I'm gonna line um, the indents so you can see these, oops. There is, um, let's see, a piece of paper. On it. Is that, yeah, so you can see that there is these larger indents right there. Um, right there. Can you see that? There's, so if you look around the point, there's these three little ones around the point, and then you move in between the two points there. And there is this divot right there. That's the one that you want to get the crescent inside of. Okay, can you see that? So I'm going to put that in there like that. And it will move, so you'll just adjust it later. So for you're going to continue on this step. Um, step number four, you already have the crescent. So you're going to pick up a 15 of, uh, fire polish and a 15. Like that. And then you're going to sew through the next open hole of the crescent. And if it's easier, you can wait to tighten the beadwork. Um, and then you can you can do this part without the crystal in there. That might that might help. So I'm going to leave it out for now, but I'm not going to tighten this because once I do, then these will all come together around the crystal. So I'll wait until the end. Okay. So, and I'm going to continue to pick up a 15, a crystal, and a 15. and sew through the next open hole of the crescent bead. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. And then by my last one. Oops. Okay. Okay. 
So that should look just like the bottom half did. So you can see it's forming a little cup shape there. And now before I pull everything closed, I'm gonna put my crystal in there. And what you wanna do is try to get these crystals to, or the 15, the fire polish and the paint, you wanna have that sit above the crystal. So you can see it should be sandwiched like that. See that? So the crystals are on top. So that's what you need to do. And then you can tighten it up. And as, as I tighten this, that's what I'm doing as I'm going through um, each set of 15 fire polish and 15s and I'm making sure that they are on top of the crystal as I pull the thread tight. Oops. And you can see this one kind of didn't make it. That one there. Oops. So I'm just gonna, anytime you see a, a significant thread gap, there, then it probably means that it's not sitting. Um, so here is a thread gap. That big thread gap. So that should be on top. Okay. So it should look like that. And then the bottom should be, you could see that the crystal is in the middle, the seed beads and the fire polish sequence. And then that should be the other side. Oops. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, okay. Thank you for nodding your head. <laughs> okay. So, um, now we should be on. Um, And we did step five and we want to sew through the beads until your thread is exiting a two millimeter fire polish bead. So there, you can see that thread right there. So that's exiting the, the fire polish. Okay. So we are on step seven now. And we are going to string two size 15 seed beads, one fire polish, and two size 15 seed beads. Okay. And then what you're gonna do is sew through this next fire polish. So I went from, let me get a pointer. Does it matter which side you're doing this on? Um, no. Okay. Just, uh, you know, if you're following the pictures, it might be, oh, okay, I'll turn it this way. 
if that's better, because then it, it looks like the pictures do. And that's what you should have. So when I picked up the sequence of beads, sorry, I went from this fire polish here, and then it's going over the crescent, and I went through this. You don't go through the beads in between. You just go from one crystal to the next. Okay. Do you want to leave a loose enough tension so you can move it around, or what? How? So with this, it as long as it's on um, the outside of the crescent. Uh huh. Then that's that's good, and you want to have uh, a good good enough tension where you're not going to see a lot of the thread. Okay. Unless you like to see the thread, you no. know, but there. So I just pulled that. And, you know, they use, you know, sometimes they lay flat. Sometimes they lay, you know, they stand up, you know, they, they just have their own character. Okay. So. You know, if they lay flat, great. If they want to stand up, that's great too. I'm having trouble keeping my um, crystal in. Is it is my tension not strong enough? Is that what I'm doing wrong? It keeps yes. wanting to fall out. Okay, that, that could be one of the problems is um, your tension. The other thing is um it might be because you have a sequence of 15 fire polish and 15 that's not over the crystal sometimes they want to slip so that's why i like to um hold it and then i push down on the crystal um, with my thumb and then try to pull the thread and then in the meantime i try to push the crystals up too and then you know it it takes some you know moving of the beads to kind of get it in there you can also try to bunch the crescents together try to move them towards the center okay does any of that work um yes it seems to be okay good it's, I think it's just a trick of getting everything in the right place. <laughs> yeah. I ran around twice to make sure I had tight enough tension. Okay. Yeah, after I went around the second time, it locked into place too. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so, so. Okay, I made a note of it. Oops, sorry. Okay, so once we did that, and we are going to repeat that sequence all the way around. So we're gonna pick up two 15s a fire polish and two 15s. And so through this next crystal. So you can see the thread is, this is my tail thread. The thread is coming out of one fire polish and I'm sewing through the next fire polish.
chair. So then I'm on my last one. Oops. And that is the first side. So I have all these points, should have six points and they should all be around the, the crescents. Okay. Um, so on step eight, my thread is exiting a two millimeter fire polish. And I'm gonna turn this onto this side so you can see it. So you see how it's exiting that 15, or the um, fire, fire polish right there, that two millimeter fire polish. So I'm going to continue to sew through the 15 from the bezel and the crescent. I am not going up through the um, two seed beads that I added in the previous step. Not going through those. I'm going through the 15 and the crescent that forms the bezel. Okay. So just those two. And that is figure L in the um, pattern, step eight. So I went through this 15 and through this crescent and my thread is coming out on the left side. And to step up, I am going to sew through the bottom hole. Oops, I have to turn it sideways. One moment. Okay, guess I need my glasses. So that's what it looks like. So you're gonna throw, sew through just the bottom hole of the crescent from left to right. Sometimes the wax, when you pull it through, the wax tends to build up there, but just remove that. So that it, that's what it looks like. This is my tail thread here. So we're gonna ignore that. This is my working thread. So it's coming out on the right side. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is now that we have the beads on one side, we are gonna add the beads to the other side. So we're just gonna flip it over. So here's the beads on this side. I'm gonna flip it over to the other side. And I'm gonna lay it down. So it looks like figure N. And we are on step 10. So again, we are gonna pick up two 15s, a fire polish, and two 15s. Is everybody at this step? 
We're all good? Okay. So did that. Oops, I'm sorry. So sorry. I need to read my own directions. So we need to, so with your thread coming out of the crescent, you need to sew through the 15 and the fire polish. Like that. There. Okay, so now your thread should be coming out the left side of a fire polish. Okay. Now we're ready to start. Maybe. Everybody's okay. So we're going to string two 15s, fire polish, and two 15s. And we're going to do the same thing that we did on the other side. So we're, we went, we're going to go from one fire polish and sew through the next fire polish. sorry, and then pull the thread. But as you can see on this, this side of the earring, there's one side where the, it goes out like a flower. And then the other side is more like a bun pan, bun cake pan. <laughs> yep. Okay, must be hungry. <laughs> so instead of making sure that they're on the outside, what we're going to do is we're going to push them in so the fire polish is towards the inside of the crystal. So here's the fire polish. Okay. And again, we're going to pick up two 15s of fire polish and two 15s and sew through this next crystal. So I move the beads towards the inner circle and then I pull my thread tight. So it starts to look like that. Okay. So we are going to continue that around the circle.
if you wanted, if you just like the look of this um, flower side too, you could just leave your earrings like that. You don't have to do, you know, the reverse side. So, you know, there's some options with these. It's however you like to wear them. Or maybe you like this side instead. So now my circle is complete and I am coming out of this fire polish here, down here. So without stringing any beads, I'm on step 11. Um, no, sorry, I'm on the end of step 10. Repeat around the circle. So we repeated with these, that sequence, the 215s, the fire polish and the 215s around the circle. And now we are gonna sew through the first 215s. and this fire polish. So I sewed up through these two 15s here and then sewing towards the left, I'm going to sew through that two millimeter fire polish. So now I should be at the two millimeter fire polish that are inside that circle or inside the crescents. Right there. And I'm going to be sewing towards the left. And now I'm on step 11. So without picking up any beads, I am going to sew through the next two millimeter fire polish on the next one right there. And I'm gonna pull my thread tight. So I have my thread Right there. So I went from this two millimeter to this one, and I did not pick up any seed beads. And then pull Lisa, them tight. Lisa, and then that, can you go back yes. on the first go around of the two um, 15s fire polish and two 15s? You're coming out of a fire polish. Is that right? And then, but what are you, what are you sewing into? 
Okay. So with that, so you're coming out of a two millimeter fire polish here. Yeah. And you picked up that sequence and you sew, you skip the crescent and you sew through the next two millimeter fire okay. polish. All right. That's what so I just like on the other side. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so now we're on this step. So I went from one two millimeter fire polish where my thread is coming out. Oops. So this is where my thread is coming out of the two millimeter and it's going into the next one. And when I pull the thread tight, you can see how those two millimeter fire polish pulled together. And that's what you want. You wanna close this inner circle. So without picking up any beads, I'm going to sew through Oops. Oh. There we go. I think my two millimeter fire polish just went under my crescent or my 15s went under my crescent. So I just had to move them upwards. So I'm gonna sew through that fire polish. And again, when you pull the thread tight, the two millimeters should close. And you're gonna repeat that all the way around. No, I just got a, there was a new update available. Wanted me to start it now. No, oh. not a good time for that. <laughs> so I'm still going around the circle. Just sewing, sewing through the two millimeter fire polish. This is the last one. So that is the second side. Okay. Does everybody's looks like that or? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, you're kind of blurry. Oh, there you go. Yep. Oh, very cool. Very nice. Good job, Marlene and Beth. Oh, and Veda. Very nice. Yeah, it's hard to Oh, and see. Becky too. Yay. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Oh, Jan. Yeah, very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm Christine. Good. <laughs> good job. And for everybody who has their camera turned off and finished it, good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, 
you can end your thread here if you want, or if you want to um, add the findings to make an earring. So that is on page four. And I will show you what that looks like. So what I did is I went down here between the crescents. And this is where I added the um, wire protector and the ear wire. And I did that because if I did it on just the one, one or the other side, if I did it here or here, the earring would kind of tilt forward when I was wearing it. So I wanted to be more centered. So it was, the weight was even and my earring, um, you know, showed when I wore the crystal. So it would lay flat or, yeah. So with my thread exiting, this two millimeter fire polish, you're gonna sew down through the, the two 15s. Like that. And then you are going to sew through this, 50, uh, this um, fire polish on the base. Okay, so this is where my thread is at. So that's on the top of the crystal, not the base in your pictures. Um, that is figure S oh. on page four. Well, I'm on figure R. And yes. Um, coming out of the top where they were on the outside of the crescent. And then let's see. Figure R. Yes, matter. you are you're right. Doesn't really matter. Pictures, so I'm just a little okay. One moment. I will um to match my pictures, I will go up there. Thank you for catching that. That was coming out on the left hand side. Oh, now you are, okay, now, <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for following my pattern, <laughs> even though I'm not, <laughs> or somehow I got turned around. So, oh yes, okay, I'm. Is it supposed to crisscross when you do this next part or just go top to bottom? Um. So what, it actually is um, in uh, like a figure eight, if you could picture a figure eight. So it's gonna go, it, so now I'm exiting um, the right crystal according to my directions. Yes, okay, we're all good there. So it's coming out the left side of this crystal. And when I pick up the, um, 15 and fire polish and 15. So I'm going to be going through this end of the two millimeter fire polish. Yeah, okay. So you can see how my thread is coming out this side here going towards the left and I'm gonna go through the right side of the bottom crystal. Oops. Oh, it's at a diagonal. Okay. 
there and I'm going to pull the thread tight so you can see that it's on a diagonal there. And I'm going to, so one more time, it exited the left side of this top crystal and I strung a 15, a fire polish and a 15. And I went through the right side of the lower crystal. And when you pull, it should be at a diagonal. So now we're gonna thread a 15. And what you wanna do, I'll try to, okay. Okay. Is you want to go through the crystal that we just added and we wanna go from left to right like that. So what it's going to do is pull that so the holes are going this way and not this way, yeah? They're going this, the hole, the crystal should be going that way and not up that way. So there you could see that where my thread is coming out of this bottom 15 right here, or um, fire polish, sorry. It's coming out of this fire polish. I strung 115 and I sewed through that, the previously added fire polish. So now I'm going to pick up a 15, uh, 15 and so you're, when you look at this top part, your thread is coming out the left. What you want to do is go through the back door or the right side of that crystal. So you do not want to go in where your thread is coming out of. You want to go through where there is no thread. Okay. And then pull that tight. So it almost looks like an X with the 15, the fire polish is in the middle and the 15 is down there, 15 going through that and then another 15. Okay. Any questions on that? So you're gonna pull the thread tight. Okay. And then you're gonna retrace the thread path to secure. So again, I sewed through the 15. The fire polish. Fifteen. Fire polish on the bottom. Remember, it's like a big figure eight. So. Okay, 
So I made one thread path to secure all the beads. I retraced that. And I'm going to continue to sew through this 15. So it's the first 15 that we added in, in this step. And from left to right, the middle fire polish, sorry. So that's what it looks like now. So now you have a middle where the other ones, you just see this, you know, the crystal in between the sandwich to attach the ear wire, you um, add an extra crystal. So, okay, so now with the thread coming out of the right side of that middle fire polish, I am going to string a wire guard. Okay, if it behaves like that. And then sew down through the left side of the wire guard. Pull that tight. And again, you're gonna sew through the back door of that same middle fire polish. Whoops. My fingers get a little slippery with the wax, so I keep a pair of pliers nearby. So. So that, so you can see it just makes one big loop around that two milli, middle two millimeter fire polish. I'm gonna pull the thread tight and make sure that the thread is inside that channel on the wire guard. There. And then pull it tight. And then you can go around again if you want, or if you think that's good, because you know it's not going to get a lot of wear and tear, um, like a bracelet or a necklace might. So I just made one pass through it, and then I'm going to sew down through a 15, and just. Um, make a knot and secure and end my thread after I attach the wire guard. And if your um, thread doesn't go through that 15, you know, you can just go through the crescent or go through the fire polish down here, wherever your, your needle will go through a bead. So now I'm just gonna sew through one more bead to hide my knot. And 
And that's it. Okay, Lisa? Yes. I think I did something just a little wonky with the X because my middle crystal there that has the wire guard on it yes. is going parallel to the cylinder beads, not across. Okay, so. I just didn't double back and do it both ways, did I? Um, let me see, I have to, um, my scissors went somewhere. This one, okay. Oh, one moment, let me get my scissors. And then, so I will redo this. So I'm just gonna end no, this I'm thread. And then um, cut your tail thread to after you get done and then you can hang your ear wire. But for, so where it went, I'm gonna cut this so I can show you. All right, let me get my thread started here. While you're so, doing this for future reference, when I couldn't see your, your bead tray, what I had to do was change my view from, from speaker to gallery, and then it worked just fine. If anybody else runs into that problem, it's because they're in the wrong view. Okay, thank you, Becky, that, that's helpful. Also, you can, um, there's the three dots in the upper right hand corner. If you actually go to Lisa's video section and find her three dots, there's a thing called pin and that makes her stay as the speaker. I have my own video section. Well, you know what I mean? Your own video? Yeah. On your oh, side, yes. To okay. your video, I can pin you so that you on my screen, you're the speaker. Mm -hmm. Okay. I always learn something new with Zoom. It just, there's so and much can, to know. <laughs> guys can play around with, if you try to pin somebody else, you could just see there's three dots on any everybody's screen. And then you just select the three dots. There either says chat. Oh uh, yes, if you move the cursor over the, the box the chat or or pin okay. yeah okay thank you okay so um to go back to your question so i am coming out of the two millimeter fire polish and that is figure s and it is um step 13. how did you get from figure r because we're um, sorry, we're in the fire polish going around to secure those around. Okay. That adding beads, which is. Can you hold on one moment, Paulette, and I'll answer that question. I okay. just have okay. one other one before that. So I'm coming out of this two millimeter fire polish. I picked up a 15, a two millimeter, and I am just repeating. Um, the attaching the wire protector part. So some of you might have already finished. You don't need to add a second one. I'm just repeating this. So, okay. So it's coming out of this 15, or sorry, fire polish. And that's on the top. Yes. Okay. So if you look at figure S, you can see there's a blue arrow that goes down and goes towards the right. So that's kind of the, it is the path of the thread. So that's what it's doing. So it's gonna cross like that. And you're gonna go through from the right to the left side. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through the two millimeter fire polish on the bottom. I don't know how you get that point. When you're at the bottom, how do you get to the top? So here it is on the top. Let me just um, move my 
there. Okay, so here it is. Out of this two millimeter fire polish on the top, as in figure S, I added the beads. And then you could see that my thread, I went that way. Okay, I started it okay. So, okay, that's what you did first, right? Yeah. Yep. So, okay, so that's good. And then we pull it tight. And then we pick up 115. And from this point, you kind of have to move this um, two millimeter fire polish. You kind of have to go from the top and then shift it. Okay. So it's like that. Okay. So you're going from the left to the right side through mm -hmm. that two millimeter. Looks good so far? Yep. Okay. And then pull the thread tight. And then pick up a 15. So your thread is, this is when we first started, your thread is coming out of the left side of that top. Okay. Two millimeter fire polish. You want to go through the back door or the right side of that same fire polish. And then pull the thread. Hmm. Like that. So did that answer your question? Well, I thought that's what I did, although I used two 15s on each side. So it came up a little bit higher. But oh, okay. But yeah, so I only used one. Yeah. So it lies but my fire in the polish still, I don't know if you can see that. I don't okay. have very good lighting here. So even if it's sitting up a little bit, yeah. Does it still look like that? No, the, the fire polish at the top just still went up and down instead of across. I and must have crossed over the X something funny in a second because I went through it again. Right. So if you just think of um, like a crazy eight or an infinity. So, you know, as you draw an eight, you're going to go down this side, back up that side. Here. Yeah. So um, if you're drawing and eight. So if your thread is exiting a fire polish there on this side, you're going to add the beads, go down. So through that bottom two millimeter here, and then cross over this middle fire polish bead that way, and then go back up and so through the top two millimeter through the back door. So Okay. Just like a figure eight. Yeah, but I think when you did it, your figure eight, you went up and came down that fire polish from the top down and then added one and went up. Oh, this one. Okay. Yes. And that's, you kind of need to do that just to pull it into position. So, okay. and she's. Yeah, instead of going from the bottom, you had to go back up to the top and then. Right, she was talking about care. this one here. When I went through and picked up my 15, I had to go Coming from here yeah. and then go down. And then once I pulled the thread tight, it shifted that two millimeter fire polish. So it was the holes yeah. were that That's way. the step I did from the wrong angle. Okay. okay. So did I. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any about that. I will um, look at the wording and see if I can um, change that to make it more clear. Yeah. I'm going to have to search for some wire guards tomorrow. 
Well, you talked about doing it as a figure eight, and I just didn't keep that in mind all the way through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if you think about a figure eight, and then, you know, it, it helps to draw it too, you know, just so you kind of know, and put your um, two millimeter, the top one here, then your middle one here, and then the bottom one is here. So Lisa, then, you could um, also mention that all the fire polish are laying in a horizontal position to each other. So they're all laying in the same angle as opposed to the upright. So when they're coming back on the figure eight to make sure that it lays exactly the same direction as the top and bottom fire polish already in the design. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you, Marlene. You're welcome. Oh, so fabulous. I love how this turned out. It just snaps right into place, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah, it's very nice. I like yeah. it a lot. So then you have two sides. And you can even, um, you know, if you want to make a double earring, you know, so you have two of them together, you could do that. You can make them different colors. You know, there's just a lot of stuff you can do with them, you know. So they're very versatile. I like the color combinations you had that that was oh, a the wire guards right here. My goodness. Oh, uh, this sea foam. And then um, this is the bracelet. Oops. And um, so I love the, the sea foam that what's the center color of that stone? Is it sea foam? Um, it's it? blue lagoon. So, blue lagoon. so cool. just so you know, um, Starman. Um, started carrying the Preciosa, or they extended their line of Preciosa crystals. And in there, I found these um, flower crystals. Uh, let's see if I have one. Yeah, here's one. Um, they're flowers, so they're very similar to the ones that we used. So you could see and they are actually calibrated. So they're a 14 millimeter crystal. Hmm. And um, so you can definitely see the indents too in there. And um, these I was actually able to use size 11 with, size 11 C beads. Mm, okay. And it's the same pattern. The only thing is with the... Um, it's five. The other crystals, I there was um, six crescents that I had to use. Don't use and five. Yeah. On these, I only use five. Cool. And that's you know the only two difference between the two. So yeah. So the one that you have right there, that's a five, right? That's a five. Yes, so this is the one that Starman started carrying, and these are um, the 14, size 14 flowers. Oh, that's very and cool shape. So I used um, the Gem Duos to connect all of these. And I like that because even if you turn it over, you know, even the backside of the Gem Duo is nice. Mm -hmm. So you can use them either way. Yeah, that's great. And it has the Gem Duo symbols clasp on it too, doesn't it? Yeah, the Relaki or uh, whatever they're called. Yes. So <laughs> this very is pretty. the um, symbol. Um, they are the, um, the Greek, um, what are they, Rochelle? Um, they're, they're all Greek names, but um, I but they go. They're the size and shape of a gem duo. So yes, and um, they're the, the bead elements. So they're available yeah. in all four of the metal colors: silver, gold, rose gold, and antique brass. And you know, there's 
there's so many of them. Um, there's magnetic clasps, there's bead connectors, there's uh -huh. earrings um, that are all part of the symbol line. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use a magnetic clasp? Put a chain guard on it. Well, the symbols ones have the locker yeah. in them. So they, they? You have to yes. really open one way to the other way. They won't just pull off. Oh, okay. Because I don't know how many I've lost with magnetic clasp. <laughs> so you could see that they have that little dimple in there yeah. on the end. That's good. That little dimple. Yeah, I can see it. And then that fits into um, the other yeah, the hole there. right here. Yeah. So they are strong and, and the only durable thing and they I've each have is, them. Yeah, my mom's there. wheelchair, sometimes it gets stuck on. <laughs> Grocery carts. Oh yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Shop at fancy stores if they have metal grocery carts. That's <laughs> all I got down here. Oh. They got plastic ones there. Plastic ones all over our hair, yeah, Target. I say Target has plastic, mm -hmm. but the grocery stores, Lowe's and Food Lion have metal. Oh, yeah. Trader Joe's is all plastic here. But so glad that this everybody could join us tonight. Um, and our December meeting, we are also going to have a whole lot of fun. We do want to bring back our show and tell. We couldn't have a holiday party um because there's just too many logistics and the wilder center was restricting the amount of people and they doubled the fee so they wanted eight hundred dollars for us Ooh. to rent the wilder center for an evening and so we decided that that was just out of our price range of reality um so we're gonna stick with virtual as well because we have so many people all over the world that are joining us so we want to hear from you and see you at our sort of holiday december event um so plan on show and tell and show us what you're doing show us your work um and so have it together so that we can we'll highlight and pin you for a minute so that everybody can see you closer but we want to start part of our december meeting with that and then um, Maggie is going to be teaching a pattern by Diane Fitzgerald for our holiday meeting. It is um, a, made with daggers and kind of looks like a fern leaf sort of thing. I don't know if you're on Maggie still anymore. Have your sample. Are you, did you leave us, Maggie? I guess she left us. Is she here? Well, she was for a minute, but she said she was pretty high on painkillers. Um, Atta girl. <laughs> so that she checked is. in for a minute, but she was kind of out of it. So that I'm not. I wonder what she's designing like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to say, tell her to send me a few. <laughs> so um yeah she was here for a minute i knew that surgery was not going to keep her away from the beads for very long no it's addictive right it is it and is and so we'll be having all the pattern and information for the december i think it's december 6th is that the first monday in december um yeah that's that sounds good i don't know does anybody have a calendar oh but it's the first december yeah, that's, that's a Wednesday. The first Monday. That's a Wednesday. No, yeah, December, yeah, December 6th. Is oh, the first. December. It Sorry. Is December 6th. That's December our next Sorry normal about Monday my bad. meeting. I was looking December at November. 6th. And so, um, and, and so we are also now that daylight savings time will be happening, you know, um, we just want to make sure and check in with everybody. If you have feedback on the time of the meetings, I know we used to meet in person from 6.30 to 8. And since we've been Zooming, we've been doing it from 6 to 7.30. So if you like the 6 to 7.30 time zone, give us a shout out that says, yeah, I want to keep it that way. If that's a real troublesome trying to get there after work and you want to shift it back, from 6.30 to 8 central time, like we used to do when we met in person, 
let us know because we just want to make sure that we don't we're not missing people just because of a drive i know if you live in california or australia then Arizona. you got to deal with it but um <laughs> Other than that, you know, let us know. So we just want to have the most optimal for everybody to visit us and join our meetings. Um, and so other than that, and any other questions for Lisa? She's got her great website. She's got kits, more colorways of this and other projects. So please check out Lisa's website. They have their Tucson show. Um, you call it workshop already. I have information at Bobby Bead as well here and they sent out their newsletter. So check out their whole wonderful event in um, Tucson to go get some warm retreat action with Maggie and Lisa. And we do have our holiday Zoom party too. Maggie and I are having our own holiday Zoom party and that's on um, November 19th. So if you want more information, go to either one of our shops and um, you can see about that. We'll be teaching another, each one of us is gonna be teaching a Starman um, trendsetter pattern for the uh, our holiday party. So we're looking forward to that. So yeah, we just wanna keep you all busy and beating, beating, beating away. Yes, keep those <laughs> hands busy. <laughs> So if you ever want to teach, also, once again, please contact me. We are looking for people to do our Let's Speed Live. Or if you want to do your own private personal workshop, you know, we want people to find you. And um, so we'll book you in, you know, pick a Saturday, we'll book you in. So just give us a contact. You can email me at Bobby Bead at info at Bobby Bead or Toho underscore Bobby Bead at yahoo.com or my email sparkly life, if you've got that. So however, messages on Facebook, any way you can get it. We wanna hear from you. So any other Nancy famous words from our new um, president? Are you guys still around? <laughs> nope, I think they're gone too. Thank I know you, Lisa, that... great pattern in class. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you Lisa. So thank, thank you, you Michelle. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye guys. Feed live Saturday. Bye, Lisa. Bye. Thank you, Lisa. Good to see everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.